Individual talent and team effort were the mainstays of the 1974 football Mountaineers. Haywood Smith, junior fullback from Dunbar, West Virginia, was an unexpected and welcome surprise to the WVU coaching staff after spring drill. He quickly established his ability to break through the line and pick up valuable short yardage. Against Richmond, Smith finds the hole, sidesteps the tackle, and goes in for the score. Emil Ross converts the point after for the 225-pound 6-1 Smith. Dwayne Woods was considered the top running back early this season and probably would have added many additional yards to the Mountaineer offense had he not been injured in the first game of the season. On this play, Woods takes the handoff from quarterback Ben Williams, gains 15, is taken out of bounds. If you look carefully, you can see his leg pulled under as the play ends. Dwayne was taken to surgery, which was successful. He'll be ready to rejoin the Mountaineers next season. Woods' loss was a burden well borne by Smith and others who finishes off Dwayne's drive with this five-yard score. Smith, who gained a total of 479 yards and scored six touchdowns, Starts a drive of his own, taking the ball 14 yards. Then for four more. And finally, Haywood caps the drive with this fine two-yard touchdown. Against arch-rival Pitt, quarterback Williams and Smith teamed up for a score. First, Williams for 11 yards. Then Smith pulling over the right side for the score. Against visiting Miami, Smith engineered a touchdown drive against a strong hurricane defense, opening with this 14-yarder. Next, three yards over the middle. He finds the hole and presses for five. Finally, Ron Lee blasts up the hole for the final three yards and pay dirt. Smith, with his determination and power, will be back next year. Number 40, 215-pound running back Ron Lee made an outstanding contribution this season as a powerful yard gainer. This run is good for 36 yards against Richmond. Ron, who gained 543 yards over the season and scored five touchdowns, romps again, this time tripped up after 22 yards. The six foot four inch Lee was useful on short yardage too, this time pounding over for the score. Big Ron also returns next year. West Virginia, unless you hadn't heard, had some difficulty in finding a quarterback this season. But the likes of sophomore Kirk Lewis, who runs 25 yards here against Syracuse, is apt to make that situation less difficult next year. Then there's freshman Dan Kendra, a 6'1", 185-pound Allentown, Pennsylvania native. Kendra runs for 12 against the Orangemen. Lewis, who weighs in at only 165, can make a believer of you. He runs quickly, and he's a thinker. The press corps at West Virginia will be looking for more from the quarterback position next year. And they're likely to find it from either Kendra or Lewis, both of whom return to do battle on next year's squad. There are two events during the year that make West Virginia Governor Arch Moore's job just a little more pleasant. First is Mountaineer Week. All of the students dress up as Mountaineers. 
Governor makes an address to them and gets to kiss the prettiest one. Second is homecoming. Amid the floats and the parades, the governor, who attends nearly every game, makes us all wonder if politics is indeed as rough as it is portrayed. You guessed it, not a bad day's work as the governor gets the kiss again. But aside from kissing, football is what the governor likes best. Head coach Bobby Bowden, in his fifth year, looks on as number 21 Charlie Miller makes the most of Harry Knight's pass deep in Richmond territory. Charlie, having taken his turn, Jack Eastwood, number five, picks off a Kentucky aerial and returns it for 25 yards. Eastwood, a 210-pound 6'1 junior, had just two interceptions on the year. It tended to make lives miserable for receivers and runners alike. Senior defensive back Marcus Mooney will be missed by West Virginia. Mooney had four interceptions this season and averaged about 35 yards returning them. This one was good for 20 yards, helping WVU's defeat of Kentucky. Eastwood puts the stopper on this two-lane pass and returns for eight yards. Indiana, Mooney makes a great leaping catch in the end zone, saving the touchdown and dampening the Hoosier spirit. Syracuse this time. The quarterback throws and the pass is there, but so is Mooney, this time with a great leaping catch and run. Stopping on a dime and finally tackled after a 22-yard return. There's more help for West Virginia, though, as shown here by sophomore Rory Fields, who picks this orange pass off to save the score. Rory is a contender and will return next year. But the secondary honors really belong to Mooney this year. From the press box at BPI with coaches looking on, let's return to the broadcast as Tech is threatening. The tight end is Kevin Dick. They're in the wishbone offense, Paul Adams, right up the nose of it. Here's the fake to Adams. Aaron is back to throw. Look out in the end zone. It'll be intercepted at the one yard line. Here we go, Marcus Booney up to the 10. Hesitate. Look out. He may make it. He's going all the way. Holy smokes. Marcus Mooney, a senior from Shelby, North Carolina. Here he comes over the 50, the Tech 45, the 40, the 35, the 30, 99 yards. Marcus Mooney for the Mountaineers picks it off at the one yard line. He went all over that field with 99 yards. A West Virginia touchdown. He has collapsed on the far side of the field and the Mountaineers are picking him up. A whole team around him. And he has come through with a big play. NCAA football has many interesting sidelights to it, not the least of which are pregame and halftime activities. West Virginia happens to be particularly fortunate in having one of the premier marching bands in the country. These students arrive early in the morning and practice long hours for their halftime presentation. Soon all this rehearsal pays off as the Mountaineer faithful behold 5,000 music makers. The Mountaineer field is transformed into a mass of colorful uniforms, pretty girls, banners and music produced by the combined bands of nearly every high school in the area. This year some 50 bands were present under the direction of WVU band director Don Wilcox.
quite a spectacle and the WVU band deserves its applause at the end of a long hard day. The main attraction of Mountaineer Field though is football and WVU has a tradition of exciting pass receivers. West Virginia loses some great pass receivers this year including number nine Marshall Mills. Mills, standing 6'2 and weighing 180 pounds, caught 36 passes this season, averaging 12.4 yards per reception. Here, Marshall takes a Ben Williams pass for 25 yards. Mills scored three times this season and had a total of 445 yards gained over the campaign. On this series of downs at Indiana, quarterback Chuck Ferranti teams up first with wide receiver Bernie Kirshner for the first down yardage. And then with Mills in the end zone for the nine yard scoring play. At Pitt, completing a successful drive, Ferranti finds Mills in the end zone again. Finally, at Mountaineer Field against Syracuse, quarterback Dan Kendra completes his first varsity pass to Mills for the score. Mills receives congratulations from his teammate and fellow receiver, Danny Bugs. Danny Bugs, nearly everyone's choice for All-American recognition this year, started the season with determination, but a sorely injured thigh. Bugs, a senior who stands about 6'3 and weighs 190 pounds, tries his patented flanker reverse with the normal results against Tulane and New Orleans. The 51 yards Bugs gained on this play would surely have been traded for the injury he received in it. Danny would be lost for several games as a result. That is not to say that Bugs, who holds records in football and track, was completely finished for the season. Against Syracuse, dangerous Dan came back with a flourish. Familiar Bugs punt return was a sight for sore eyes. The 1973 West Virginia Amateur Athlete of the Year and recipient of Kodak All-American Accolades takes this Kendra pass 62 yards for the touchdown. Even the great Bugs can have his difficult moments. Danny makes a magnificent catch of this Kendra heave, fighting off the defender for the touchdown. The official rules interference, however, and the play is called back. Danny is momentarily unhappy, but always a super sportsman who will be missed and remembered by West Virginia fans. Bernie Kirshner, number 86, is another graduating senior who has made a great contribution to the Mountaineers. Bernie averaged over 14 yards per reception this year, scoring twice, this time against Tulane. Bernie, who took on the job of punting as well as pass receiving, often was the player responsible for crucial first down yardage. Now that makes three outstanding receivers West Virginia will lose this year. Fear not though, because the likes of sophomore Randy Swinson promised the same exciting execution we have come to expect. Swinson, who stands 6'3 and weighs 210 pounds, averaged over 14 and a half yards per reception this year on 19 completed passes. What's more, Swinson has that ability to pick up extra yardage using both brute strength and intelligence. Randy returns next year with more of this type of activity. He should make more yardage, points, and great spectator viewing. Ever see a 225-pound fullback receiver do his thing? This is Haywood Smith pulling the ball and the tackler. Don't think we won't see more of that next year either. 
When West Virginia takes to the road, activities must be completely coordinated to ensure a timely, tireless, relaxing schedule. Generally, the team meets at the Morgantown Airport a few minutes before takeoff and gets settled down. After a pleasant takeoff, meals or refreshments, depending on the time of day, are served to the players and the staff making the trip. Ship's controls are placed on automatic pilot, and everyone relaxes in his own way. Until that is, the destination point comes into view. The pilots make a pass over the next day's field of battle. The mountaineers welcome, though they may be, start to get psyched in enemy territory. West Virginia, ready now, gets tough as the Wildcats of Kentucky press toward the goal line. Junior defensive end Andy Peters makes the first stop. Kentucky tries again on the option, but Charlie Miller smells out the ball, causing a fumble, which Kentucky unfortunately recovers. The Wildcats line up again, this time on the pitch out. Ken Culbertson makes the stop. Finally, the quarterback decides to keep the ball, rolling the opposite direction right into the hands of defensemen Dunlap and Eastwood. A great goal line stand. Kentucky will try again, however, and on second down, try off the right side. Merrill and Miller making the stop. Again, the quarterback keeps, this time running into Merrill and Peters, who alertly plug the gap. Finally, the Wildcats elect to try the air, but Rich Lukowski breaks through the line and forces the bad pass over the head of the intended receiver, leaving Kentucky just three points for the afternoon's trouble. Against the determined Tulane who has the ball, the quarterback rolls right, waiting for just the right moment to pitch out. But Jack Eastwood just happens to be in the way, causing the fumble recovered by John Spragan, senior defensive end. Spragan's played a brilliant game against Tulane and here sacks the quarterback for a 17-yard loss. John is one of six seniors lost from the defensive team next year. Another senior gone from the defense will be Burley tackle John Tree Adams, who takes advantage of good coverage by the WVU secondary to sack Billy Daniels, Pitt's dangerous quarterback. Often, though, even the best of execution and intentions go astray, as here against Penn State, senior Jeff Merrow blocks the field goal attempt. Eastwood scrambles for the ball in the end zone, but somehow the Lions come up with it for the score. You just can't trust a Nittany. Number 50, Ken Culbertson, 200-pound sophomore linebacker, promises to help out the Mountaineers with performances like this outstanding break through the line, recovery, and final tackle of the Boston quarterback. Monongah native and senior Miller and Culbertson team up again. Miller blocking the VPI field goal and Spragans recovering for the 24-yard return. The Wiley Miller will be difficult to replace. Senior Marcus Mooney tries his hand at causing the fumble after this fine pass completion. Junior Jack Eastwood making the recovery. Eastwood promises another fine season next year. Definite pro prospect Jeff Merrow, always up and always playing a good game, makes a nine-yard sack. Jeff's leadership is a fine inspiration to future Mountaineer teams. Finally, Kenny Culbertson blitzes through to make another sack against the opponent quarterback, a play that should become familiar as West Virginia's defense becomes a tradition to match its exciting offense. Each year, though, seems to produce its own superstar, and 1974 is certainly no exception. Number 24 on your program, number one in scoring, yardage, carries, and your heart, is junior running back Artie Owen. Owens, who stands just 5'11 and weighs only 175 pounds, runs north, south, east, and west with an effortless determination that must be infuriating to an opponent. Artie's ability to stop, change directions, and slip tackles is just plain wonderful to watch. 
Owens compiled 1,130 yards this season, second only to Bob Gresham's outstanding senior year. We'll ask you to keep in mind, Owens has another crack at that record. Artie, over the course of the year, averaged six and a half yards per carry on 174 attempts. He scored seven touchdowns, including this 44-yarder against Tulane. Not only was Owens good in the open field and squirming out of tackles, he can find the hole and punch through it long before the opposition has time to correct. Owens also has that nasty ability to kick return. Having seen plays like this one against Miami, it's doubtful many teams will offer the ball even in the end zone to Artie next year. We hope they do, though. Of course, a part of any great running back success is blocking. Keep your eye on the center of your screen after Owens makes his catch. That's Haywood Smith putting it to them. Owens started the year as the number three tailback on the Mountaineer squad behind Ron Lee and Dwayne Woods. It's hard to imagine what might have happened if Woods had not missed the season because of injury. We'll find out what that combination will produce next year when both Woods and Owens return. Hardy's longest touchdown run of the season came in the last contest against Virginia Tech. Let's pick up the broadcast to see what it was like. Oh, Danny Bugs flanks right. Kendra hands it off to Artie Owens. He finds an opening through the middle, breaks through, he turns it on. I think you can kiss him goodbye. Artie Owens is going for a West Virginia touchdown. Came through the middle. They shook him past the line of scrimmage. They caught the tech defense, pulled up tight. Artie Owens gallops 85 yards for a West Virginia touchdown. Coming straight off the middle, outrunning the tech secondary. He got by them. They were in full pursuit, and he travels 85 yards for a touchdown in the first scrimmage play of the second half. As we've said before, Owens returns next year. The Mountaineers wrapped up their season in Virginia with an exciting victory over BPI, won in the final seconds of the game. The season as a whole was not as productive as was initially hoped, but football, the breaks and injuries are about as predictable as a good West Virginia snowstorm. The Mountaineers lose eight starting seniors this year, six on defense and two on offense. They'll be difficult to replace, but leave West Virginia with experience on both squads. There's another tough schedule on tap next year, featuring such teams as California, SMU, Pitt, and Penn State. Head coach Bobby Bowden and his staff are preparing for the season now, and it promises to be a good one. My name is Jack Fleming, and I'll be looking for you game time for the 1975 Football Mountaineers. <laughs>